please stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute pledge. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get the approval of the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. You're all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And now we're going to move on to the board appointee candidate interview for area four. So this is your first candidate, George Olson. Mr. Olson, um, you, you do have an option. Would you prefer the timer so you can see the time remaining, or would you like the timer down? Oh, it's, it's fine. You, you may leave it up. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's start out with the first question here, Mr. Olson. What do you see as the basic purpose of public school, and what is the role of the board of trustee in fulfilling this purpose? Well, of course, the, the uh, the whole purpose of the board is oversight and to set the standards and the goals that, that you hope to attain. And then, of course, the, the school staff and, the, and is, are the ones that carry those out and reach those, but under the guidance of the board. The board gives the, they're, they're, you might say they're the legislators, and, and the, uh, then the staff are the executors, the executives to perform those duties. Is there any, um, anything else you want to add to that? Or personal comments or ideas? Well, it's, it's, of course, very important for the board to, to stay up on, on uh, what was the, the needs of, of the public, the area that we are in, and, and, uh, and as well as, as the progression of things in the, in the nation as well. Okay. Um, what are you proud of in this district and uh, what would you like to accomplish as a board member? Well, one of the things, I, th I think one of the, the biggest, you might call it victories that I've had working with the school district in the past was at the high school when we computerized the uh, antenna systems for the, for the entire district. 
because it was that we were losing so much money uh, to uh, average daily attendance by, by not being able to keep up just manually. And the first year, I believe, that, that uh, we brought in at the high school at that time, <coughs> over $100,000, which paid for the computerized system for the entire district. And so, uh, and of course, one of the, uh, one of the, I would say that probably the biggest failure during that time would also be uh, following, following my term at the high school in, in administration, I went to, to uh, Smith River School. And in fact, that's where uh, Mr. Napier and I met. I, I, I hired him back there years ago. And, uh, but I attempted to bilingualize the school. And of course, bilingual to me is not one language for one group and another language for another group, but it's both groups actually being uh, bilingual. And, uh, and I just was not able to accomplish that. So that was one of my biggest disappointments, is not being able to get that accomplished. So what would you like to accomplish as a board member and why? Well, one of the things that really concerns me now is looking at the state of California. The state of California, of course, is ranks high as far as funds going out to uh, schools and teachers. I think it's number third, number three in the nation. But as far as outcome performance, it's now ranked at number 50. Uh, about well, several, just a few years ago, it was 47. Or I beg your pardon, it was 49, and then it came up to 47. But then this last year it dropped back down to 50. And there's there's a reason for that. But, and we should be getting that gap closed down. And of course, what is the reason? Well, basically, you've got a program, you've got an administration of the program, and then you've got the public. Now there's a breakdown somewhere that's causing that. And of course in our own district, we have a, a breakdown as far as the scores for uh, the Common Core uh, testing each year that we have. Because now it, it appears that a little over 25% are, are passing at the level for each of their levels in math and what, a little over a third, about 70% or something like that, in English. And that means that three quarters are not coming up to the level they should in math, and, and two thirds are not coming up to the level that they should in English. And so once again, what is the problem? Is it the, is it the program itself, or is it the implementation, in the implementation of that program? And if it's the, and it, or is it a combination of the two? Is it a combination of that and public, uh, what, do we, what, would you, what would we say? Public awareness of the need or desire? And I think it's probably a combination of all three factors. Now if you have a program, and apparently in some areas, this program is being successful, but in other areas it's not. But statewide, it's not to where you would expect it to be. And so why is that? And of course, that should really be worked out and, and find out. Where is the breakdown in that? And I think that's a number one problem, not just for our district, but for the entire state of California. Describe a well-run successful board meeting and the objectives of a good meeting. That, would you repeat that please? Describe a well-run successful board meeting and the objectives of a good board meeting. Well, with, with uh, a well-run meeting, of course, you, you must have somebody that's in charge. You must have a, a leader, that, but you also need to have people that are knowledgeable, that keep up on, on things, and, and can contribute, in turn, in a peaceful manner. 
And so those things are those things are, are very important. If you're going to have a successful meeting, you have to have those elements. And the objective of a good meeting? The objective of a good meeting? Of course, what's the objective of, of the goal itself, of, of the of the board itself? The goal is to produce the best education that you can for the public. And that's every student involved. As a trustee, what is your primary purpose or role? How would you fulfill that role as an individual and as a member of the governing board? All right. Uh, as a trustee, of course, once again, the main goal is to produce the very best education for each and every student. Now, is that, and that doesn't mean that, that the identical education for everyone. It means the best one for the individual. And so, uh, in order to do that, you need to understand that everyone is an individual. Their needs are going to be different. And you need to be able to supply the individual needs for the individual student. And once again, the board is the body that actually sets those standards for the, the, the running of the schools. Now, they, they establish by their vote, by, uh, and, uh, and then of course the administration and the, and the rest of the staff actually implement those rules. So, uh, and of course, my own, my own feeling, of course, I've, I've invested a lot of years in education here in, in the district. I've taught uh, every subject, every grade level from kindergarten to level 12. And, and, uh, and then even before I came to the district, I was instructor in the United States Army and, and uh, with the uh, 7th Army Combined uh, Officers uh, course in, in heavy weapons in, in, uh, in Europe. And, and, uh, so, I've, I've invested literally my life with education. Now, since I retired from the district, of course, I've been uh, investing in education there in overseas with, uh, with uh, English uh, learning. With, actually, it's a Christian organization with Christian schools. And I've lived in Germany, I've lived in, in uh, Korea, I've lived in Thailand even down that southern state of Florida <laughs> and, uh, and in Canada as well and working with these schools and, and seeing the, 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 the similarities amongst people, amongst all people, and yet the, the individual differences in every one of those areas as well. And you find those worldwide, you find the needs worldwide, and, and uh, Many of the solutions are individual, but many of the solutions also are worldwide solutions. What would you do if you believed that administration at any level had no, not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? All right, this is the one thing that is so, so, so important for uh, the operation to be successful, and that is uh, openness, honesty, and, uh, and so that you can see what really is there and what direction you need to go in and how you can go in. Because, uh, and over the years, I've seen, I've seen a breakdown in an area or two, and then I've seen uh, a, a person coming in as follow-up that was just exactly the opposite. Everything was open and above board, and, and, and things were able to be accomplished. And, uh, and so, it's when you have those, those positions where someone is fearful or whatever, and he's not open, and he's not playing, or he's just not keeping up with his work, then something has to change. Either he has to, he has to uh, get his act together or, 
or be replaced one or the other. I mean, what else can you do? Because you must have that good operation. You must have that cooperation to be successful. Describe your response if a community member or parent approached you in public and asked you uh, asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. Well, it depends upon what the issue was and what my feeling about that issue is. I mean, once again, you, you've, got to be, you've got to be straightforward. You've got to be honest about things. Uh, I've been kind of, uh, I've, I've kind of had the reputation of being like a bulldog if, if I got my teeth into something to, to not let go. And uh, in fact, you know, we still have a member of the community that that his, his case went through to the California State Supreme Court for a decision. And uh, right now he's in Abbey Meadow, and uh, he's had strokes the last, last few years, and he's there. But uh, it, it went clear to the State Supreme Court to get it straightened out. And, uh, and it was primarily because of, of my really staying beside him and, and pushing through and saying, no, what's right is right, and we have to follow through. Now, you can quit and forget about it, but that doesn't straighten out the situation that's not right. And he did, he stayed with it, and, and, uh, and won one case to the, to the California State Supreme Court. And, uh, and so, yes, we, we, have to, we have to follow through. We have to be honest and fair with your assumption. Now, another another situation where I wasn't very successful, but uh, there was a triple murder here in the, in the county some 30 years ago or so. Dick Trone and I tried to get the authorities to follow through on really uh, sitting down with an individual that had information and really getting to the bottom of it and, and uh, we went to a couple of district attorneys, we went to uh, different sheriffs over the years, and 27 years after the incident, he and, he and I once again approached the authorities, but it wasn't until 27 years afterwards that that case was solved and it went right back to the family that we were talking about. And so, sometimes you have to be persistent. Sometimes, yes, you'll be, you'll be listened to and and things will follow through and come out right. Sometimes that won't happen, but that does not excuse us from being diligent and staying to the, staying to the, the course that, that you know that's the right course. Not the politically correct, necessarily, but, but what's the difference between the right and the wrong? ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberation on important policy issues? Well, the, the board does need to be open to, to public comment, and of course you are. <coughs> this is one of the policies that, uh, now of course, what, what needs to be done though before the situation comes up is to really make sure that everyone understands uh, the, the operation, how you address the board, how the, how the board will respond, and, and, and the limitations of what you can say publicly and what you cannot say. Uh, the, the, oftentimes you will get approached with a situation that, that is a personnel situation that you are not free to discuss publicly. And the public needs to know that, that there are certain things that, yes, you're, you are addressing those situations, but you are not free by law to, to, uh, to publicly uh, express those. You do have executive sessions, and, and they're not, uh, well, the public is not invited to, to, to those sessions. They can't be. 
But all action by the Lord has to be taken publicly. Now, not all the little details and things like that that go on, go on in the executive session come out in the public presentation of something. But the action must be taken publicly. Otherwise, it's not a board action. And just being able to, uh, as you as you work with the public, just making sure that they understand that you are willing to work with the public, and and they understand that, and, and you greet them in a in a respectful way, and, and things, and and they know the rules that are set before it, how many minutes do they have, etc. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. Well, and of course, once again, I think one of the strengths is, is my past experience in education, both here in the county, both in elementary, both in, in uh, secondary, and also in, in uh, the teaching area, in the administration area, and then my, uh, my work overseas, uh, uh, living in the different countries that I've lived in and under the different, lived in different government uh, types uh, that uh, exist in each one of those countries, the, uh, the different, the different uh, social and religious uh, communities and things. So I have a variety of, of experience in that area. I, myself, am a mixed culture, myself, on uh, my maternal side, uh, my maternal grandmother is Native American, my, my maternal grandfather is, was Portuguese, now he changed his name when he came to the States to George Washington Miller, that doesn't sound very Portuguese, does it? <laughs> but but uh, he took on a good American name, he thought so. And then uh, on my father's side, from, from, uh, from Norway. And so, uh, you know, he was the first born in the U.S. He born in Gold Hill, Oregon. And uh, so I, I come from a mixed background. I'm, I'm a card-carrying member of the uh, Native American Chasta tribe. And, uh, and so I have Native American uh, ties there, too. In fact, I was just communicating with the, with the chairman of the, of the uh, tribe and, and her husband this morning. And so uh, on, on with the computer, on the internet. And, and so uh, I, I, uh, I, I do speak a little German. I, uh, I don't speak Russian, really. I understand a little. And yo no hablo español, pero yo tiendo un poquito. I understand a little Spanish. Too. I studied Latin in high school, and so I, I find that I can understand uh, most, a good bit of Latin words. Now, I do not speak them, and, and don't ask me to write them. I can read a little bit of it, but, <laughs> but, the, but they're different levels. But at least I, I've had that exposure. And, uh, and like I said, in the, in the different areas. So I, I am. Uh, sensitive to the cultures and sensitive to to, uh, to uh, a variety of people and uh, and of course I do have a nice background myself. Alright, <clears throat> please summarize what you would need or would do to become a more effective board member. Well of course um, You've probably already uh, gotten the idea that uh, for the last few years I've spent more time out of, the, out of the United States than I have here. And for instance, this last year, I was gone just, just half the year. Uh, I was gone 25 weeks out of the year with, with my travels and working. Uh, and so uh, I, I need to of course, get a little bit more educated on exactly what what each of the policies are as far as funding for the schools, for the, 
and the funding of the district, uh, how that funding is to be distributed, and, uh, and get that basic information. Now, uh, because, see, I retired from the district 20, 23 years ago. And so, uh, a, lot, a lot has changed within those 23 years, I know. But it's not <coughs> above being able to find out what's, what's different. And basically, when you look at what's changed, yes, there, there, there are changes in, in different funds, you know. There are changes in different programs, you know. But in, in effect, you have the same thing. You have the program, you have, you have policies, you have procedures, you have funding, you have uh, rules and regulations on those, and it's just a matter of finding out what applies today. Describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on an issue. All right, that's a that's a lot of questioning. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of little factors in mm -hmm. and, and and of course state law and state law. Is, you know, yeah, that's something that you follow. Now policy is something that that you establish, but your policies are, are, are a method of achieving the program with consideration of those state laws. And so how do you, how do you uh, deal with parents and the public is you need to also be sure that they understand your limitations as well as your ability to go in one direction or another. You also need to understand what is it that your community needs. Now, see, uh, in fact, one of the, one I, I coached wrestling here at the high school years ago. Well, I had a wrestler that was a was a uh, league champion, white star, and all that. Well, we lined him up to uh, to go to a university in, in uh, Colorado and and have a scholarship and, and, uh, and things, but he said, well, no, he said, I, uh, I'm going to stay back, I'm going to work a few years, and then maybe I'll go. Well, he never did, but he became a successful businessman here, and he, and he still. And you see, uh, not every student is going to go down the same line. You need to find out what his interests are and what's the best way to meet uh, match his interests with his abilities and, and uh, go from there to, to, to cause that person to be successful in his life. I had a, I had a, a student that uh, had a real desire, and, and if you visited her home, she had a pet dog, she had a cat, she had a turtle, she had a uh, fish, she had, it was like a little zoo. And she really wanted to become a veterinarian but she did not have the academic ability to really become a veterinarian. So I said, well listen, let's, why don't you see about getting a, a job at one of the veterinarians here and working with like that and, and uh, see what you can do there? Well, she did. And after a little bit, she came back to visit me and she said, Mr. Olson, I don't think I could ever become a vet. Well, why do you say that? Well, she said, I had to assist the vet in an operation in my feet. <laughs> but she continued to work with the vet for a number of years, and, and, uh, and now she's uh, a mother and is, uh, is home with, it, with her children and things. But, but you see, uh, we need to be aware of how best to meet that student, that child's need to fulfill a successful life and a rewarding life for them individually, not just following some pattern and say, well, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. I, I think also one of the things that we must consider is is, uh, you know, the, the business community uh, also, because they're a major part of our community as well. 
And, and I think I do have a bit of an understanding there. As you go, I'm a small business owner myself. Here in this community. And, uh, and so, uh, I, I, you know, have some understanding as far as that aspect is concerned also. Is that it? Well, this is the end of your interview. Thank you again for your time and interest in serving the community. At this time, you're excused from coming here. Thank you. Well, yeah, he's, he's excused. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're going to reconvene over here. And uh, right now we have Charlene Menzies. 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 Charlene Menzies. And let's see. I want to thank you for your willingness to interview as a candidate for the trustees representing Area 4. This evening, the board will ask a series of questions, and you will have 40 minutes to respond. So please pace your answers accordingly. Board members will take turns asking questions. Following your interview, the public will have 20 minutes to comment on your interview and your overall candidacy for the board. Written comments regarding the interview may also be submitted by the public through Tuesday, February 25th. Those written comments will be attached to the February 27th meeting agenda. Okay, let's start out with the questions here. Okay, the first question is, what do you see as the basic purpose of public school, and what is the role of the board of trustee in fulfilling this purpose? Well, I think the basic purpose of public schools is to, um, you know, number one, educate children, but it's also um, to provide everyone, regardless of their background and their socioeconomic status, with an equal um, chance to have a, a good social and educational experience that will prepare them to be successful um, members of society as they move out of the school system. So we need to prepare kids for, for later life. And what is the, um, the role of the board of trustee in fulfilling that well, the Board of Trustees is responsible for making sure that there is a system in place that will successfully meet the needs of our children. Um, the Board is the ultimate place where policy gets set, where um, the direction and the tone of the schools get set, where we start with, with how we approach, um, how we treat the people that work for us, how we treat the, the people who are actually working with the children, um, you know, is it a positive experience? Because if people aren't happy coming to work, they're not going to be happy working with the children. So I think it's the, the board is the one that sets that tone. They set the policies, they set the tone, they make the financial decisions, and every decision that the board makes ought to start with how does this impact our kids. What are you proud of in this district? And what would you like to accomplish as a board member and why? Um, I think I'm most proud of the fact that it is a small district. We have um, very dedicated people who not only have gone through the district as students, but have come back to the district and are now as teachers and administrators. 
Um, a number of people that I went to high school with have come back and they're in the school system now. Um, I think you have a very dedicated group of people that are working here that really have the best interests of the children in mind. Um, so I really think that um, the changes that I would want to make is to increase the perception among those folks that this board supports them and that we are doing the best we can to get them what they need so that they can give our kids what they need. Um, because at the end of the day, they're the teachers and the staff are the ones that are dealing directly with our kids and they're the ones that need the support. They need to feel valued, they need to feel like they are doing a good job and that they're appreciated for it. Uh, describe a well-run, successful board meeting and the objectives of a good board meeting. Ooh. Um, well, a board meeting, a successful board meeting is one where the board members come prepared, where the materials have been distributed ahead of time, um, where they come prepared with um, questions. Um, I actually have to prepare on an executive director, so I have to answer to a board of directors. So having the materials ahead of time, having them um, be read, and having the board members prepared for the meeting with questions. Um, I think it also um, is a successful meeting if, we, if there is public comment, that we hear all the public comment that's, that wants to be heard. Um, even if it means being here a little bit later than you might like, I think that it's important we serve the public. Um, they need to be uh, respectful, um, but we should hear them if they have an opinion. Um, I think that there should be, uh, there are going to be certain things during certain times of the year that you're going to have to have on your agenda. There's going to be budgets. There's going to be times when you have personnel issues, um, but if it's all laid out and the materials are prepared ahead of time, then um, it should be easy to become, come prepared for the meeting. As a trustee, what is your primary purpose or goal or role? How would you fulfill that role as an individual and as a member of the government? Um, I see it, my responsibility as an individual to represent the district and the schools that um, are in my district and to bring that point of view to the board as a whole and to the administration. Um, I don't, it's not my role as an individual to act um, necessarily or to set policy or to go in and tell somebody what they're supposed to be doing. That is a board function as a group. Um, boards make decisions as a group and set policy as a group. Um, but I do think it's important that we're there to listen to what people say and that we communicate back um, and are able to explain to people sometimes why board decisions were made, what information people may not have. Um, so act as, a, as an individual, act as a liaison between the community and the district board as a whole but in terms of acting um, or setting policy, that's a group decision. <clears throat> what would you do if you believed that administration at any level had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? Well, I would tell whoever I thought hadn't given me accurate and complete information that I didn't think they had given me accurate and complete information. Um, and then I would try to find out what the reason behind that might be. And if I wasn't getting a, an adequate response, I would try to figure out, okay, where can I get the complete information? Um, and I think I would be um, questioning why and bring that concern to the board as a group. Um, why we weren't getting accurate and complete information. But all dealings would be you know, in a respectful manner and I would feel the need to go to the whoever wasn't, I thought wasn't giving me the information first and give them an opportunity to explain. Um, but I'm not necessarily going, I'm not the type to just say, take a pat on the head and go away. <laughs> so if I, if I wasn't satisfied, I would try a different tack. 
Um, describe the response of a community community member or parent approached you in public and asked you for your or asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. Um, I think I would have to <coughs> say um, it, it, de it would depend on the issue. It would depend on how much information I had about the issue. It would depend on what their position on the issue was. I would definitely hear them out. Um, I would definitely say that I would take their their opinion to um, the folks that actually make the decision. Um, I couldn't say one way or the other if I would agree to do that or not agree to do that because that would be an individual decision based on what the situation was and what they um, what their position was. But I, they need to be heard. How does an effective board member ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberations on important policy issues? That's hard because, <laughs> because no matter what you try, it always seems like there's someone who said they don't know. And I know I've been in that position where I, I will say I didn't hear about that, so nobody asked me what I thought. Um, I think you need to use a variety of means um, for parents. I think the, the things that get sent home to their kids, um, I hope, are the things that get looked at. I know I look at my son's packet every night that he brings home, um, but I know social media is a, is a big one now. Um, the websites, there are apps now that you can, I, I got a t actually got a text. Um, from the school district at one point on, an inf on, on something that I had wanted information on, so that is a good way to tell people. At some point, you have to make sure you give people the opportunity, and then if they take advantage of it, they take advantage of it. If they don't, there's not a lot that you can do. But that being said, I'll go back to my, if you have people who are in the room, and there are 30 people in the room that want to speak on a topic, then you let 30 people speak on a topic. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. Um, I think probably my biggest strength is I am a problem solver. I don't like unsolvable problems, so I'm always trying to find what we can do better, how we can do it more efficiently, how we can improve things. Um, and again, not taking the first lack of success <laughs> as the be all end all. If something doesn't work, let's try something different. Um, you know, I have been, um, I graduated from eighth grade from Smith River School. I um, went through high school and graduated from high school from Delta High School. I came back to the community after college because I care about the community. I think the schools are a vital part of that community and I feel very strongly that um, if we don't do by, right by our kids, we're not doing right by the community. And so that passion for trying to bring up the next generation. And we have a lot of issues in this community and we have a lot of um, bad statistics. I've worked in the health and human services for a lot of years. And if you look at some of the, the health and well-being statistics, it's kind of scary. And our rankings in the state are kind of scary. And I think that um, we can do something about that. We're a small enough community that these problems are solvable to a large extent. And I think the schools have a huge role to play in that, and I really would like to be a part of that. <clears throat> Please summarize what you would need or would do to become a more effective board member. I need to be appointed or elected to the board <laughs> first. <laughs> um, well, I think, again, transparent information from the administration of the school as far as how um, you know, a lot of the issues that seem to come up, the hot button topics, seem to be around money. 
Um, I know that when I ran for this position four years ago, there was not a very transparent um, accounting system. I, my, I understand that it's better now, but I, I tend to drill down to you know things as, as minute as if we're being asked whether we should have teachers at Klamath or bus kids to Crestnell, I want to know how much that bus route costs. And we should have that information. We should be able to drill down that, that narrowly before we make a decision of, of what to do when there's several different options. So I think that it would be the, what I would need to have um, to be an effective board member is, is good information from the administration. Um, you know, again, listening to the public, listening to what people want. Um, listening to the views of the people that work in the school system and, and what they think can be improved. Because the people who are doing the work every day know what they need to get it done, and we should be um, paying attention to that. Um, last question is, describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your own personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on an issue. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, state and federal law has to be followed. Um, and it doesn't matter what my personal opinion is about a law. Um, if it's the law, it's the law and we have to follow it. It's not a wise decision to decide to ignore something, get sued, spend a lot of money defending the lawsuit, lose, and then have to do what we were supposed to do in the first place. Anyway, so that to me is, is kind of the guiding factor. The second factor is student needs. That's why we're here, that's who we're here for. Um, and staff needs are related to that um, because they're the ones that are meeting the students' needs. So those are interrelated questions. Um, and my values are what is going to produce the best outcome. So I'm hopeful that my value system would be in line with what is in the best interest of those things. And I think if we're, if we're following the law, if we're looking at what's in the best interest of the kids, if we're looking at what's in the best interest of the people who work for us, the community needs will follow in a lot of cases. I didn't use up my 40 minutes, did I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just, I really um, feel like I can bring something to the board, and, and my son still has eight more years in the school system. I feel like I'm very, um, and he is a special needs child, so I've had that interface as well. He's, um, and we have a long way to go before we're meeting the needs of our special needs kids. But he's also fully mainstream, so I've seen, I've kind of gone through with his classmates as well, and a lot of the things that he needs, everybody needs. All the kids need support in the classroom. All the kids need to have um, smaller class sizes, and all the kids need to have more adult attention in the classroom, and I think there's ways that we can do that um, if we want to think outside the box and we want to be creative. I see things on um, <coughs> specials on television or documentaries where school systems are doing really creative things and I go, oh, I really wish we could do something like that here. So I want to bring some, some energy and some creative thinking and um, really see if we, can, if we can make a dent in some of those statistics that our community has. Um, and we all touch the kids. Kids are our future, so that's why I'm here. Excellent. <clears throat> well, I guess this is the uh, end of your interview. Uh, thank you again for your time and interest in serving the community. At this time, you're excused from the interview. Thank, thank you very much for thank the you. opportunity. Thank you. Do you want me to leave it hot? Let's yes. Can turn it off. Okay. okay. Three minutes to respond, so please face your answers accordingly.
Board members will take turns asking questions. Following your interview, the public will have 20 minutes to comment on your interview and your overall candidacy for the board. Written comments regarding the interview may also be submitted by the public through Tuesday, February 25th. These written comments will be attached to the uh, February 27th meeting agenda. Okay, so first question here. Yeah. And just make sure to hold the mic close. That was the, the complaint earlier. Just hold it close. What do you see as the basic purpose of public schools and what is the role of the board of trustees in fulfilling this purpose? Well, the role of public education is really about socialization more than anything. That um, students are able to not only take what they learn at home or don't learn at home, and that's reinforced by what they get in the classroom. Um, the, what I see as the function of the board may be a little different than, than some of your perceptions. Um, I really see the administration, the superintendent, serving at the pleasure of the board. And so it's the board's responsibility not only to set policy, but also to form directions in relation to areas of uh, hiring, uh, special education, um, budgeting, you know, I think one of the most important things that a board does is really personnel. It's in hiring and retaining uh, qualified people, both teachers and uh, support staff. Okay. What are you proud of in the, this district? And what would you like to accomplish as a board member and why? Uh, I'm proud of my daughter more than anything else. Uh, my daughter Molly teaches at Crescent Hill, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm trying not to be facetious here because she's just one person, but she represents a student that I had as a teacher. I had my daughter in sophomore English, along with many of her friends, and what I saw that came from that generation and her friends were, um, the millennials that, that are phenomenal people. Um, so I think, to generalize, I'd say my, my greatest um, you know, pride in this school district and being a teacher in this school district was later in later years seeing how well students have done. Uh, was, it, was it a two-part question? I don't know. And yeah, the second part was, what would you like to accomplish as a board member and why? Well, I, I, I kind of have a highfalutin uh, vision of what I'd like to see. I think education, public education, and it's not just this district, made a huge mistake years ago when we pulled support staff out of the classrooms. Every classroom should have, at least up to grade six, should have a TA, um, a support staff in there helping the teacher. When you, if you've got a 32 to one ratio and, and you have one adult in there, there's so many distractions that um, you're, never gonna, you're never gonna achieve test scores that are, that you want. And again, it comes down to money, of course, but that was a huge mistake in pulling support staff out of the classroom. And you can't ever cover that with two part-time people. You need, you need a teacher and a support staff member there together all day forming relationships where you don't even have to speak. It's, it's you know what's gonna happen next. You know how to handle situations. You know how to set up the next part of the curriculum, how to get the kids out to the uh, playground and back. <coughs> uh, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade level, I would like to see every teacher have a part-time aide that is um, able to cor make corrections, able to supervise kids, able to um, proofread papers. Um, I'm not saying that there has to be a full-time aide, but as a language arts teacher, if I had somebody half day in there, 
that was literate and could help uh, with uh, literature and writing, I, I, I would have been a much better teacher. And by the way, you asked me what I was proud of. I was proud of the fact that I was able to raise a daughter that's become an excellent teacher. Uh, ironically enough, when she was old enough to answer the question, and she was no longer in my class, I asked her what kind of a teacher I was. And she said I was average. So, and she was probably right. Describe a well-run, successful board meeting and the objectives of a good meeting. I don't know. I, that is something that ha would have to almost be answered from looking from the inside out. Um, what I've seen of school board meetings, and I have to admit, I haven't been to too many of them in the last 10 years, is they, they're operating fine. I mean, Frank does a great job. Um, there's cooperation that goes on. The agenda's posted. But I'm not sure that's the question, really. I have no idea how this school board or any school board functions unless I'm in there as part of it, that's the only way. Okay. As a trustee, what is your primary purpose or role? How would you fulfill that role as an individual and as a member of the governing board? Um, well, if you take a look at the goals uh, that you guys have set, I don't mean guys, you people have set, um, I, I can't disagree with any of them. I would probably prioritize more than anything personnel. We're in a situation, and we knew this was coming uh, years ago, where baby boomers are retiring. And the backfill, the people that are going to take their places, are finding other things to do, other things, other jobs, other careers that, are, that pay better, that are less stressful, that uh, are valued more. And so, as a board, as a board member and trustee, my primary focus would be, we need to bring people in here. We need to train them. We need to pay them well. We need to make sure that they have health and welfare benefits. Uh, the ideal, you know, if you're gonna have an ideal situation, you can go back to the classroom and having a, uh, having a teacher's aide in there helping the teacher full day. Uh, I can see a situation where if you're gonna hire someone who doesn't have a credential yet, and I, I understand that's happening quite a bit because you have interns that have to come in. That intern should probably be placed in a classroom with a full-time teacher for an entire year. In other words, that teacher becomes a TA for the year, and they're paid as a new teacher with full benefits. And so, and, and if, they're, if you have someone coming out of college and they go into a situation where they're mentored, not two hours a week, or not someone that comes in and lectures them and puts them through a training program, but actually on a daily basis, demonstrates and shows, this is how I've done it for the number of years that I've been here. And that's how, that's how someone learns. <clears throat> what would you do if you believed that administration at any level had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? I would question. Um, for years, uh, well, for several years, I sold real estate while I was a teacher. And actually, doing the real estate made me a better teacher because I began to see the world in different ways and I had to deal with contracts and things like that. Uh, but what I learned in real estate applies also to education. And that is, it's not what someone tells you that's important. It's what they don't tell you that's important. And so it's really important to ask the right questions, dig into the information, and expect the right answers. Sometimes when you're questioning, you've received the right answer, but sometimes you don't. Um, in real estate, when someone told me, oh yeah, there's no problem in the attic, I would have to go up into the attic to make sure and verify because there were situations where it's not what they told me, it's what they didn't tell me, 
that became the problem. Describe your response if a community member or parent approached you in a public in public and asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. It happened about an hour ago out in front here, the IMC. Uh, they didn't ask for help, but a parent came to me and I introduced myself. They recognized who I was and they <clears throat> they talked about a problem that they had in a public school. Um, I had opinions about the situation. In other words, I I couldn't blame the parent. I couldn't blame. I also couldn't blame the school or the administrator involved because there were two sides to the issue. So at that point, all I could do was sympathize, listen, and if I were a, a board member, I would make note and go back and find out. I'm not very good at letting things go, as you might already. And so when posed with a problem, uh, when I see something or I'm told something, I'm pretty direct. In fact, that's probably one of my weaknesses. I'm a bit forceful at times. But I go and I find out. And if that helps, sometimes it does. How does an effective school board ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberations on important policy issues? Well, number one, you have to respond. When you receive an email or a phone call or you're, you're, someone comes up to you in a restaurant and speaks to you, and you have to, you have to get back to that person. And if that means telling them something they're not going to like to hear, it's still part of the job. Um, now, if they come up to you in a restaurant and they want to talk about something and you don't feel like talking about it, then you politely say, well, let me, let me get your email, let me get your phone number, and I'll get back to you. And then you do it. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. Uh, okay. Um, I'm fairly analytical, and so when I'm told something, I, I want to know the foundation of it. I want to know um, if there are if there are other sets of facts, data, statistics that maybe aren't revealed on the surface, and. Um, yeah, that's probably my my greatest strength. I, I, I do question. I do I, I you know, and uh, my, my greatest weakness is sometimes I don't let go of things. You know, even when presented with accurate information. So, so you know, sometimes you got to hit me on the head with a two by four, but that usually works. <clears throat> okay, uh, please summarize what you would need or would do to become a more effective board member? Hmm. Well, not having been in the position, it's difficult to say. Um, when, when you come from something, come into something from the outside, uh, you never know what you're getting into. You might have people tell you, you might have read something, you, you know, I've done some reading in the past month or so about responsibilities and goals of trustees and whatnot. And it all looks really good on paper and it sounds marvelous, but in actuality, you're never, I'll never know what would make me an effective trustee or board member until I do it. Describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your own personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on an issue. Um, that's a lot. Um, I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to go back to um, decision making is, is always a process of gathering information first, 
finding common interest and ground, because you're always going to be dealing with more with people who have diverse opinions. You have to find where everyone agrees. And from there, you can, you can spread it out, and it's like a deck of cards. You can spread it out and make decisions from there. But if you don't find common ground and you don't find um, that spot, then the sweet spot, you're never going to be able to drive a ball straight down that fairway. And so finding common ground and working together, gathering in, gathering the information, that's, that's really how you bring all of those elements together. Anything else you want to? Well, I have about 25 minutes, so I would like to have some songs I would like to sing. <laughs> I've got a dance routine. It's in court. Okay, no, I don't have anything else. Got a <laughs> <laughs> no, I get, actually, uh, oh, oh yeah, oh, I, I, I have been known to drink. <laughs> and Abe, I do. Uh, but I, 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 I've quit drinking for a while. I mean, I. Never say never, but yeah, I found I've, I've yeah, okay, enough of that. But yeah, Porta just says it sounds real good right there. No, I mean, I was talking for the mic. Oh, <laughs> You can do karaoke. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so no. you want to so just said Porta I went straight to beer. That's no, it. That no, was straight to the, beer. Uh, yeah. It was yeah. for the uh, karaoke. No, I tried karaoke <laughs> once. Can I get an approval of the agenda, please? Can I get an approval of the agenda? Wait a second. Second. All fair. I am opposed. Okay. Tonight, the board will interview the final two candidates for appointment as area as the area four trustee for the Donor County Unified School District and Donor County Office of Education Board. Each candidate will have 40 minutes to respond to the questions posed. The public will then have 20 minutes to comment on the candidate's interview. There will be a final 20-minute public comment period following all interviews. For those wishing to submit written comments regarding candidates, the board will take all written comments through 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, February 25th. The board will not be discussing candidates responding to public comments or any other items during the session this evening. The board will deliberate on the appointment in this public session on Thursday, February 27th during the regular scheduled board district board meeting and the vote to appoint uh, will be taken at that time. All written comments will be attached to the February 27th agenda for public viewing. And now we have uh, Judy Gort. Good afternoon. Well, thank you for your willingness to interview as a candidate for the trustee re representing Area 4 this evening. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh. This evening, the board will ask a series of questions, and you will have 40 minutes to respond, so please pace your answers accordingly. Board members will take turns asking questions. Following your interview, the board will have 20 minutes to comment on your interview and your overall candidacy for the board. Written comments regarding the interview may also be submitted by the public through tomorrow, Tuesday, February 25th. Those written comments will be attached to the February 27th meeting agenda. Okay. I'd like to open up with some questions. I will start out with the first question. What do you see as the basic purpose of public school and what is the role of the board of trustee in fulfilling this purpose? More than just education is giving a student of each child a purpose and a goal in life and a guidance to get there. And the trustees are to find ways to make that purpose more than just learning to read and write and to give students basics, but to give them goals and to give them confidence to get there. Question? Okay. Um, what are you proud of in this district and what would you like to accomplish as a board member and why? 
I think that the district truly cares about students. They work hard for the students, and I've seen that in the time I've been here. And I would like to see, I know that with a board, you do very tiny things. Nothing is big and expansive, and you can't move mountains. You just make little tiny changes. And I'd like to see those changes to better students and to better their ability to um, be proud of themselves and to further their ability to make a better life for themselves. And I think that's a very important part of what we do and to find ways to make that not just part of the school but part of the community and part of their home life and that we integrate all three of those together and make it a meaningful important part of their lives so that when they leave school they say school was great for me and important and it meant something. Describe a well-run successful board meeting and the objectives of a good meeting. Well it needs to be efficient, not have any bickering. It needs to um, have an agenda that is clear and understanding understandable to everybody. It needs to have an opportunity for people who are wanting to express their opinion to be able to make that available. And yet to have the, the um, parts of the agenda that are there worked through clear, clearly and concisely. But I've, I've read of several things where people felt they were left out. And I think it's very important that no civil servant board leave people out or make them feel like they have been left out, that everyone's heard. And I think that's an important part of the board, is that they get the expression from people and hear their needs, because that's how we improve what's happening in the community and in the schools. As trustee, what is your primary purpose or role? How would you fulfill that role as an individual and as a member of the governing board? I think the primary purpose of the trustee is not just to be at the meetings, but to be at as many things as, this, as one can for the school, for the students, for the um, community, to hear what is happening around the community, around the school, to um, relate those things to the community. Um, when I was on the board before, part of the community was saying they were giving lip service to the um, children having, having a less, um, less um, chance to, to be um, sent home, and I described what the positive, positive behavior program was like and how it worked for the students. And I felt I made a good impact on those people who were there, understanding that we were trying to make a difference in the students' lives and not just giving lip service to cutting down on the um, suspensions, that we were doing positive things. And I think making that liaison between what is happening in the schools and what's happening in the community and how they believe is a very important part of the job. And going to as many programs, things that are available, to know what is going on is a very important part of the job. And I see that as something that I, I can do because I have no other activity that I have to attend. So I can do that and find out what's going on and relate it. <clears throat> what would you do if you believed that administration at any level had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making decisions? I would try to find as many places I could ask questions and try to find more, play, more ways to ask questions 
and get different answers or try to get different answers. Um, the one thing I have learned in the past is all you can do is ask questions and ask more questions and see if the answers are different and how they are different. And use your best judgment as to what you are hearing and what the underlying words are and underlying meaning are. And also try to hear what other people are saying and from other sources. Um, I've heard that sort of back talk and, and sometimes it's valuable, sometimes it isn't valuable. So it has to just be all listened to and sifted through. But that's the best you can do, is try to be as fully informed as possible. Describe your response if a community member or a parent approached you in public and asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. I would listen to what they say and tell them that I would look into it at a different time, not there, not then. I would ask questions then and I would ask questions later. But I would not make any promises to them and I would not um, direct them anywhere unless I knew exactly what direction needed to be taken at that moment. Normally you have to just take it under advisement and go to wherever sources you need to go to. It's not your job to make the decisions, it's someone else's. How does an effective school board ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberations on important policy issues? I think to have forums, to have them at meetings, to um, see to if there's opportunities to hear their concerns, ask questions, go into the community, go into the schools, especially into the schools where you hear what people are saying at the school level and what their needs are in the schools. And anytime there's some kind of a forum or some kind of a, a meeting where parents get together and be part of it, I think that's a very important part, not to just be part of a, a board, to be part of a community. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. One of my great strengths is that I listen, that I'm patient, that I'm not somebody who goes off and talk, but thinks things through. I'm concerned and caring about everybody. I have very few prejudices. I think we all have prejudices, but mine are very minor and very limited. I'm old enough that I have a lot of experience and a lot of ways to um, make my experience part of my everyday life. And I bring a lot of caring to what I, I do and anything I do. I'm not one who just as a small agenda. I don't bring an agenda to anything I, I bring to the table. I, I let whatever's in the offing set the agenda, not me. <clears throat> Please summarize what you would need or would do to become a more effective board member. Well, since I've been here before, I don't think I need much. I took the governance classes five Saturdays in Sacramento, or in Eureka, and one in Sacramento, six in Sacramento. And I still remember absolutely most of it, and I still have the books from it. I didn't throw them out. And 
I know the, the most important critical rules that one brings to the table. And so that part of it I'm prepared to step in without the learning curve. It can be very steep. And um, so all I would need to know is what's, to get abreast of what's happened, what's, what's been on the agenda, other than what's been in the newspaper. I don't know what's happened in the last three years and what's, what the needs are right now that have changed. And that's what I would need to be prepared for. You mean the MIG Masters in Governance? Is that what you took? I have a Masters in Governance, yes. yes. And the County Board Masters, too. Okay. The last question is, um, describe how you would balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your own personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on an issue. Student needs and the law are top priority. One can't flout the law no matter what. And what the student needs and what the com community values are are very important. My values play no part in what happens. I don't see them as being anything of importance. What, what is important is what the community is concerned with, what the students need, and what the uh, school needs are. But I've never strayed far from what, what the law requires us to remember. Five weeks of master's governance, <laughs> make sure you know that. <coughs> Okay, those are the 10 questions we had to, to pose for you. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, any prepared idea that you wanted to present? The only thing I would like to add is that I'm a person who really wants to be part of the community, part of the schools, part of the activities. I don't stay home and just go to a meeting. I go to as many of the school activities, as many of the um, concerts, the um, awards programs that are available for you to go to. I think that's a very important part of being a board member. And I think it's a very important part of showing the community that I care about what's happening to the students. I went to every one of the um, Native American awards and I went to um, the awards for the students who got A's and B's, and other things like that, that normally weren't very well attended. Some of the meetings, um, the reading, I was the only board member that attended. And I think that's one contribution I can make that's very important. If other members of the board can't make those types of meetings, I can. And I can share what I learned and be share, make the liaison between the community and the board and what the schools need and try to make that a better part of what is there. And because I don't work, don't have much of an activity schedule, doing that is what I see as important and valuable and would like to make that my contribution. <clears throat> this is the end of your interview. Thank you again for your time and interest in serving the community. At this time, you are excused from the interview. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. The board will now open the podium, podium for public comments on the interview. As previously stated, the board will not engage in discussions concerning the interview or respond to public comments. Please remember, comments are limited to three minutes each, and a total of 20 minutes has been reserved for public comments on this interview. Do we have any public comments? Do you have comments after each person interviews? Is that yes, what we're doing? Okay. No. Right now, we're just... Focusing on. We're going to be interviewing uh, Joey Borges, and uh, thank you for your willingness to uh, interview as a candidate for the trustee representing Area 4. This evening, the board will ask a series of questions, and you will have 40 minutes to uh, respond, so please pace yourself accordingly, your answers accordingly. Board members will take turns asking questions. <coughs> Following your interview, the public will have 20 minutes to comment on your interview and your overall candidacy for the board. Written comments regarding the interview may also be submitted by the public through Tuesday, February 25th. Those written comments will be attached to the February 27th meeting agenda. Let's start out with the first question. What do you see as a basic purpose of public school and what is the role of the board of trustee in fulfilling this purpose? So. The uh, basic purpose of the school uh, would be to provide a safe environment for the kids, uh, to further their education, teach them the things that are needed. Uh, and I guess that's really about it. As long as they provide a safe environment, offer the kids everything they need to succeed into their future. And what was the remaining part of the question? The, uh, the uh, role of the Board of Trustee in fulfilling this purpose. The Board's role in fulfilling it is to, I guess, direct and help make directions for everyone to move forward in making those things happen. Okay, what are you proud of in this district and what would you like to accomplish as a board member and why? So I'm pretty proud of the community of this, in this district, how everyone can kind of work together um, and better things for the community. And lately I'm kind of seeing that in the school district and why I'd like to be on there is to help kind of mend that. It seems to be a little bit broken at the moment. And I would like to do what I can do to mend those fences and keep us as a tight community and everyone working together and moving forward. Okay. Describe a well-run, successful board meeting and the objectives of a good meeting. Uh, a well-run meeting would be something that stays on tasks and accomplishes the things on the agenda listening to the public and working to improve whatever is needed for the public or for the school district. Um, I, mean, I guess that would be about it. As trustee, what is your primary purpose or role? How would you fulfill that role as an individual and as a member of the governing board? One more time, sorry. As a trustee, what is your primary purpose or role? Second part of that question. How would you fulfill that role as an individual and as a member of the governing board? I think the primary purpose is to help guide and direct the uh, school district in a way to benefit everyone involved and benefit the students and uh, basically help the kids. Uh, what was the last part of that? How would you fulfill that role as an individual and as a member of the governing board? I mean, I guess by uh, bringing a different perspective and an open mind and you know, 
bringing what I have to offer to the table, a different point of view, um, being fair, honest, and doing what's right. Okay. <clears throat> what will you do if you believe that administration at any level had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? So I don't know exactly what the protocol would be, but I would uh, first find out exactly what the steps that need to be taken to uh, correct that problem. I mean, going to a higher up or going to a fellow board member, expressing the situation, and then following through with whatever those guidelines are. I mean, I would have to research them because I don't know them, but I assume there's a basis and a step-by-step -step to deal with that. Describe your response if a community member or parent approached you in a public, in public, and asked for your support on a particularly hot topic. Issue. Well, I don't think I would. I mean, I definitely listen. Uh, I have that all the time right now, actually. Um, and you listen to everyone's concerns, and you try to learn as much as you can about the situation. And I would not voice my opinion in either direction towards them, just basically a lending ear to listen and hear where they're coming from and then further uh, investigate it because there's, you know, there's always three sides to the story, I guess, you know, their side, the other person's side, and the true side. So I would basically listen and then investigate. Okay, how does an effective school board ensure opportunities for parents and community members to express their diverse range of views to inform board deliberations on important policy issues? I guess by making themselves available would probably be my number one way. Being able to listen and take that information and find the answers for them. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. So I have been self-employed basically my whole life, and so I understand budgets and uh, business and how things work. Um, I would be beneficial, I believe, in seeing that. Uh, I am extremely involved in all of every outing in school there is from sports to cheer to to dance to you name it um, assemblies i'm involved constantly at everything um, and so being out on the grounds and knowing what is needed out there would be an added bonus to the board i guess because i have kids in multiple grade levels from you know fifth grade on up um, so that would be a benefit. Okay, <clears throat> please summarize what you would need or would do to become a more effective board member. Uh, I would definitely need more information. Uh, having, you know, the first hand info on everything that's being discussed, the budgets, the uh, problems that arise at the schools, uh, I would need a lot more of that information at my disposal to become more effective in helping in any way that I could. Okay. Um, the last question is describe how you balance community concerns, student needs, state and federal law, staff considerations, and your own personal values and beliefs to determine how to vote on an issue? So I think number one would be the student and, and their safety, I guess, and their uh, growth as part of the school district. So that would be like the leading factor into most all decision making. Uh, and of course, the laws that are in place, you would have to make sure you were in accordance 
with those, and then my beliefs and my values, I think, is a big part of what uh, makes me a good candidate because we, or I, put children and their safety and the community highest above most everything. Okay, those are the questions we have. Now I'd like to see if there's anything that you um, had in mind that you wanted to say or something you would like to say, you know. Anything else you would like to mention? Uh, not really. I mean, I kind of mentioned that I'm already currently extremely active in the schools uh, from PTSO to uh, everything involving my kids. So I think this would be the next step for me to really help. So that's about it. Okay, this ends your interview. Thank you again for your time and interest in serving the community. At this time, you are excused from the interview. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The board will now open the podium for public comment on the last interview. As previously stated, the board will not engage in discussions concerning the interview or respond to public comments. Please remember that comments are limited to three minutes each, and the total of the uh, 20 minutes has been reserved for public comments on this interview. It's open to the public. Are there any comments? Okay, there are no comments by the public. Okay, public comment. Opportunity for comment by the public on agendized items that are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the board. The board value comments received, but the law requires that board members not engage in back and forth conversation on items not listed on the agenda. The board may, at its discretion, refer matter to administration or calendar the issue for future discussion. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Board bylaws 9323 states individual speakers shall be allowed three minutes to address the board on each item, on each agenda or non agenda items. The board shall limit the total time for public input on each item to 20 minutes. Do we have any public comments? Is that me? Yes. I'm waiting all this time. Okay. It takes longer to get up and down than it does. Um, my name is Esther Cup, just in case no one knows me. But, um, and I'm in District 5, so I really don't have a voting input to District 4. But I would like to. Uh, voice my opinion on the character of a candidate that's running. And to qualify that, I sometimes know a little bit about this. I was a, a Title I president at Crescent at uh, Joe Hamilton. We took a thousand kids flying, which was great. I was a PTA president at uh, Crescent Elk. I've been involved with the school system forever. I ran for the school board once, and let me tell you, to run for a school elected office takes a bit of courage and dedication because you put up with a lot of nonsense too. But all those things have taught me that the character that you want to represent your community is important. And um, oh, I don't hate it when I get serious. <laughs> um, I'd like to tell you the good things that I have learned from George Olson. He has been an outstanding person in the community. When my boys, this shows how long I know him, my oldest son just turned 58 Saturday. But he was on George's wrestling team, and so was my son Mike, and so was Scott. And they learned fairness, honesty, and there's three parts, I think, of the education system. There's the child, the parents, and administration. George has worked hard with all three of those components. Plus, he's been an administrator at different schools. He's been in other countries, which brings up a, a gift of what he's learned there. So um, 
I come before the board to tell you that's what I think is important to get a qualified person. And I'd like to recommend George Tools. Is my time up? <laughs> I could go on. But, uh, no, actually, like you. Oh, but wait a minute. That was a question I asked. I can't ask questions because you can't give me answers. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Cup. Any other public comments? I was impressed with all of the candidates. I thought they were very well, well read and did a good job. Tomorrow is your turn. The question, though. Okay, no other questions? Just going to adjourn. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.